A journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. One decade ago, this channel emerged from a puddle of inexperience with a playthrough of Caesar 3, a game from a series that I loved from the 90s. I remember going on to Heaven Games to find new block designs to help me build like a pro. Turns out, pure imitation wasn't enough and I never managed to finish any of the games as a kid. However, Completion isn't required for adoration. So Caesar 3 and Pharaoh remained as two of my favorite games from their inception until today. Speaking of, today marks a monumental occasion. Pharaoh A New Era is ready to be played and play it I shall. This video is also sponsored, so I will show you everything you need to know. In this video, gameplay of the first dynasty, analysis of changes, the different military, and more. Soon my domination of these remade Pharaoh missions will be added to the YouTube library, and you are of course free to peruse the existing archive of Caesar 3, Pharaoh, Zeus, and Emperor Rise of the Middle Kingdom playthroughs here on the channel. There is just something special about these games, isn't there? What makes them stand the test of time? Why are they not only still popular, but growing in popularity today? Whatever the reason, Pharaoh A New Era is here and meant to modernize an old favorite. The new visual style has mixed opinions, some loving it while others not so much. Personally, I'm more interested in gameplay changes. Global employment is an option, making the game play a bit more like Zeus and Emperor. How about bug fixes? Will pavilion walkers teleport to distant roads while skipping areas right next to it? Military has been completely reformed. Some may even consider it removed. And I know many would agree and disagree with that. And what about balance? Also, will there be new and exciting bugs to find? If there are, it's likely I will find them because for some reason I attract every bug possible when playing games. Either way, I'm committed to completing Pharaoh all over again through this new lens with masterful city building, critical analysis of the changes, and with some nostalgic glee fueled by memories. By the end, Will we find that a new era means a better era? History will be the judge. And me, I'll, I'll judge it too. Now, join me on this adventure that could potentially span years as we take the first step into the refined sands of Pharaoh A New Era. It's going to be a long one. All right, welcome to Pharaoh A New Era, and we're gonna jump into the campaign here, reliving 4,000 years of Egyptian history. Proceed. We've got to get through the first mission ever. Hey everyone, do you remember Nupt? Your family begins the pre-dynastic period, leading a small band of nomads through their discovery of the arts of civilization. Your leadership helps to set Egypt on its course to eventual greatness, still glimpsed only dimly. The first mission of Pharaoh. Nut, a village is born. So obviously this will be a pretty straightforward one, but uh, we, I, I, it's just exciting starting up Pharaoh from the beginning. It took me seven years to play through the first game. Hopefully it won't take us that long this time around. Welcome to ancient Egypt, land of the pharaohs. Here you'll participate in the history of one of the greatest civilizations the world has ever seen. In an epic story that spans more than 15 centuries and two dozen generations. You must lead one family, generation by generation, from its earliest beginnings in Egyptian prehistory, through the dawn of civilization, to the establishment of a unique and powerful empire and beyond. 
Our story begins more than 5,000 years ago, along the banks of the Nile River in an area known as Nut. Here, a small confederacy of clans struggles to eke out an existence in the harsh environment. With you at its head, your family leads this small settlement. Welcome back to Pharaoh! Uh, here we are, with the humble beginnings. And you might notice one big change, that there is a loss condition if you go into debt too far. Of course, this game is tutorialized much, much better than the first game, but you know, I'm just, I'm not gonna read through all the tutorials because I know how to play Pharaoh, uh, but we will go through this. Look at this, it's, it's tutorializing the UI, and the UI is very different, um, and, you know, it's gonna take some getting used to, but not so bad. We can zoom out as well, so we can see more of the map, and I, the hotkeys should be working if I press... Oh, I, it's gonna make me do the stuff first. So, alright, let's build the houses. No road access. So, of course, we need to build the roads. It, th this is how it's telling us how to build Nupt. The Kingdom Road, yes, we know how that works. Immigrants spawn and they walk to their houses. Oh, the, the little group of ostriches here. It's so it's it's so weirdly nostalgic, but new at the same time. It's it's a weird feeling. <laughs> but I am so excited to play through this game once more. I only have one playthrough. I say only one playthrough of Pharaoh and Cleopatra on the channel. So we're gonna do like a whole bunch more missions. I'm new here. I wonder what the city will offer to a person like me. All right, let's speed up the game. I have, just because it's me, I have changed the hotkeys to um, what I'm more familiar with. Access to water, of course, we start with wells. Don't use them too much throughout the campaign because we've got better ones. Quality of life, all right. Uh, evolve them into sturdy huts. Are these sturdy huts? Oh, hunting. Yep, okay. I I'm too good for this game. <laughs> so let's get hunting going. You can see it shows the spawn points and despawn points. Let me slow the game down again. And this should work. Copy buildings. Yes! The new quality of life features are very, very nice. Uh, workforce access. Now, global employment is an option, but for now I will leave it as normal. Mission one, I'll leave it as, as workforce access. Uh, so they have to send out the worker seekers. I'm the most popular person in the city. A lot of people need jobs. Yes. Now we got to build a granary. Also, oh no, the granary is facing the wrong way. You can rotate the granary. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? You can rotate most buildings now. Um, bazaars and distribution, very good. Uh, let's go bazaar. Walkers and return points, yeah. So it actually shows the spawn point and return points. So, forced walkers is still implemented. We, we did ask them about that. And they said, yeah, they, they want to allow that to, to stay in. But to make things clearer, they actually show the spawn point and despawn points. You can rotate the bazaar as well, if you want. Ambul Ambulomancy. They're actually explaining how walkers work. It's, it's really good that they do explain that, because if you've, if you've never played the old Impressions games, it is actually very confusing. Um, so that, that's difficult to deal with. We can't build roadblocks yet. Oh, there we go. Now we can build roadblocks. So we want a roadblock there, roadblock there. Fire and collapse risk, no problem. Um, We'll go for Firehouse. We can place these anywhere now. So Firehouse, yes. And Architect's Post. Access to clean water. So also, I just wanted to check. I think we can... Hunting Lodge. We can rotate the Hunting Lodge as well. Also, oh, I, I, I can't wait to see if the hunting doesn't bug out this time. I had so much difficulty in the original Pharaoh with hunting. Basically, you could only have one group of hunters. If you had another group of hunters on the other side of the map, the spawning of the ostriches would, would mess up, and it, it would just become a big, big mess. Uh, also, I set this to default accept none, so let's set that to accept all, so we can actually get some meat in there. Also, the bazaar should be set to buy. In the options, you can now set the defaults. I will be going over the options fully in a little bit. Um, 
Let's, uh, we need to get some clean water. So water supply goes right. Also, actually, while we're here, let's, let's just confirm Forced Walker does actually work. What am I doing? That, that's not how I'm going to test Force Walker. But let me just make sure we, we actually can do Force Walker here. So if we had, for example, a broken loop and I wanted to put a water supply. I can't put a water supply. Let's, let's put something. <laughs> there's, there's no water there. Hunting Lodge. Yeah, there we go. So you see the spawn point is on one side. The despawn point is on the other side. So they are maintaining the southern spawn and the northern despawn. So Forced Walkers does work. Very good to see. Um, let's go ahead and put down that water supply. That can go right there. You know, this is not exactly how I would build things, but there we go. Well done. By filling your people's bellies with nourishing food and protecting their homes from fire and collapse, you have helped this fledgling civilization take its first step on the long road of history. Did it in under a year, and we are playing on max difficulty as well. So it's got a nice little recap here of the, the ratings uh, and the houses that we needed to get and our total population at the end. You can keep governing, but I think we should head straight into mission two. So let's go straight into mission two. Remember, follow on Twitch at Gamerzak for live gameplay and subscribe on YouTube to keep up with me conquering the new era. If you want notifications that work, you can join our city building community on Discord and opt into notification pings. Links below. Welcome, citizens of ancient Egypt, to mission two of Pharaoh A New Era in the pre dynastic period. Ah, Thinis. Everyone remember Thinis? Uh, your family. Yeah, th this is the. We're beginning the pre dynastic period. Setting up the civilization for eventual greatness. Here we go, into mission two, Thinis. This is still pretty much the tutorial missions. The dawn of civilization, we just need to get one ordinary cottage to win. And don't hit the lose condition, which is now going too far into debt. Here we go. After many years and the passing of a generation, your family has resettled in the area of Inis, in Upper Egypt. Here, a small band of local rulers is attempting to extend its influence over Lower Egypt and all lands along the River Nile, and to unite this realm under its own house with one supreme leader. Establishing Finis as a thriving city like nothing ever seen before will prove the worthiness of the Thinite Confederacy and help them gain supremacy over Lower Egypt and the other factions vying for power. In time, this will mean providing the population with entertainment and building wonderful temples to worship the region's patron deity. To build a city this grand will require a substantial supply of cash. You'll find rich deposits of gold ore in Thinis and harvesting them should be your first priority. Welcome back everyone to Pharaoh A New Era. Thinis, the dawn of civilization. New beginnings. All right, so I don't need the tutorial, but just to let you know, the game is pretty effectively tutorialized now in these early missions. Build housing. Ah, oh, here we are. Oh yeah. The Look at the gold mines available to us. <laughs> oh, and there's the ostrich hunting. So I always set up right here. It's an easy start location. Um, I just set up a nice row of houses like that. Nice row of houses like... What am I doing? Not like that. Because I'm going to have those houses on the outside. And then I... Can I... Ooh, can I... Okay, you can't shift click... Uh, you can't, well copy click uh, the roads, but you can copy click the buildings, you know, copying. Look at that. Oh, such a nice feature to copy like that. Uh, let me go ahead and extend the road out here. Just make sure there's a house there. We can roadblock there. And then we need to get the essential services down, which would be the... Oh, did I build this close enough to the water? Probably not. <laughs> 
<laughs> I always I always mess that up. I don't think I, I built it close enough. You know what? I, I'm just gonna fix it. Just gonna fix it. We can do that. No problem. Also, I just yeah, these these moving clouds. It's it's something I'm really into. <laughs> I, I'm really into moving clouds in city, like the cloud, sh the shadows of clouds. I'm really into that in city builders. I, I don't know what it is. It just makes the world feel a little bit more alive. There we go. Let's get some water going there and then we'll get the food supply. Actually, can you rotate the water supply? I haven't tested that. Okay, water supply doesn't rotate. I guess there is, isn't really a front and back to that. <laughs> that makes sense. So most buildings can rotate. Even the firehouse. Look at that. I rotated the firehouse there, and I rotate the firehouse there. Speed and key binding management. Yep, of course I've done that already. Uh, architect's post. Face that way. Face that way. Look at that. They face different ways. Uh, and... <laughs> I used to think in the old impressions games, I was like, why can't you rotate every building like the statues, you know? And then I realized, even the houses do actually have rotated versions like that. Then I realized the sh the shadows would be on the wrong side. So here it's Im implying the sun is coming from the like bottom left corner, I guess. I, it's, it's hard to describe angles of the sun in an isometric game. Like bottom left, but in the sky. That's sort of where it's implying. So the shadow you see on the architect's post here, it should be on the lower right side. And here the shadow is on that side. It's not just a flipped graphic. They had to swap the uh, the direction of the shadows. You know, Granary also rotates very good. Uh, we want the bazaar there. And then we want to do some food and farming, hunting lodge. Yeah. Have them face different ways like that. Looks good. Now, let's make sure we set these to accept all and you to buying. That will get that area going. We just need to get 10 meager shanties. So we can speed up the game here. Everyone move in, get these houses evolved. I like the blue water. Like, the, the colors are all slightly different. Like, this water is definitely much deeper blue. It's hard to compare with some things. Managing treasury, the gold mines. One of my favorite things in these games. Uh, gold mines. Uh, oh, let me slow down the game first before I make a mistake. Let's go one, two, three, four, five, six. We'll be rich. I know no road access. Let me do that. Is there, is there? There is pathfinding on the roads. I was concerned about that. A lot of city builders nowadays, they don't actually have pathfinding on the roads. Um, and that can be a problem because drawing roads then becomes very difficult. Um, I, I, it is a, a tricky thing to program because, you know, you, you can't just have the, the roads going in an angle. But see, it does it does try and find its way through, so that's good. Undo undo does work as well. We got to build a village palace, so that would be is that under services? No production, stock and distribution, food and farming. Um, no, it must be under services. Oh, it's right there, village palace. The categories are all slightly different. Can I fit this here? Can I fit it there? Does this this does rotate? Okay. Um, you know, to make it easy, I'll get rid of one gold mine. There we go. That should give us the room. That gold looks shiny. Look at that. No one can accept these goods. That's okay. I can use the rest. <laughs> oh, I missed these lines. Let's have the palace face this way. Out of money in 3099 BC. Vaults have run dry. There are rescue funds, though. Oh, I needed to roadblock that and then also put down services, firehouse. Let me just copy these. Copy that. And then I also need to get the police station, which I can face. Oh, so, so now that it shows the spawn points and despawn points, it makes it easier to not have to, like, do a row of roadblocks because you know where the spawn point is if you mouse over and wait a while which that is also an option it'll show it'll, it'll just 
tell you where the spawn points are. Overlays, of course. We've got overlays. Right, I've hotkeyed my favorites, but they're over here. Water overlay. You know, I've got my fire, damage, water, which are the three main ones I pay attention to. <laughs> so that's good. Gold's coming in. Source of money. Uh, we're supposed to select the crime overlay. Yes. Uh, would that be under risks? And then crime. There we go. Did that count? Risks. Crime risk overlay. Oh, yeah, yeah it's fine. Health and disease. Yes. Uh, physician. So is that also... Yeah, services has hygiene, so we need the physician. Do we have an apothecary yet? Not yet, I think. Okay. Send out a physician to take care of the people. Religion. That means we need to throw down a temple. Um, a temple and two shrines. We can rotate the temples to make that fit a bit nicer. And we can rotate the shrines as well. So we can do like that and that. Oh, I skipped a message. Build a festival square. Can I open this? Build a festival square on an intersection. Okay. In, uh, yeah, we'll just put it on the end here. And then that should still be religion and festival square. There we go. Consult the Overseer of Temples to throw a festival. There we go. The new festival design. Festival square design. So the Overseers are still bound to the numbers. Can be rebinded. I will be going through the full options. Uh, here's Bast. Hold a new festival. Common, lavish, grand. Well, we can't do grand, so let's do lavish. Order a festival. Okay. And now we should just wait for the festival to begin. Meat stocking up there. There's a graphic for like half meat. How much is in here? 2,300? Yeah, so that should be fine. All right, and I think I think we have conquered Thinnis. <laughs> it, it's not a tricky one. Okay? It's not a tricky one, but... Um, I miss this. Entertainment. Lavish festival. Ah, right. We need to have small blessing from Bast. Okay. Um, that means I should just move that. Get rid of that. Go to entertainment booth. Right there. And a juggler school. Right. Can be rotated right there. So we got some destination walker going on just to stabilize the... Entertainment of the jugglers. Ah. I mean, this this feels like playing Pharaoh. It's just a little bit different. And I think that that's sort of what is needed. Because <laughs> always remember, OG Pharaoh is still there, right? You can get OG Pharaoh on GOG.com. Uh, we did it. So don't worry about that, you know? But, uh, this could be a different flavor. It's, it's nice so far. Excellent! You have built the first true city in this unforgiving land, providing your, for your citizens corporal and spiritual needs, and have helped the Thinite Confederacy unify the divided land. Took us 20 months, but I was taking my time. And I will be going straight into mission three, but you might want to check out some of the other stuff I'm covering as well. You know, the, the full options menu. I'm, I'm going to be talking about the similarities and differences between OG, original Pharaoh, and a new era. There's a lot of differences, but a lot of similarities. It's, it's hard to compare, but it's interesting. It's interesting. All right, we're going to move on to the next mission. Welcome, Pharaoh fans. I bet you're curious about this. I think it's about time that we spend some time checking out the options menu because having played through the entire game before, a number of these things are significant and change quite a bit about the game. So I'm going to go through all of this with you one by one for 
a comprehensive analysis. So you can see in the options menu, there's gameplay, graphics, audio, and key bindings. And just as a note, I think the developers have been listening to me complain about a number of things because I really like some of these options. So first of all, there's just language options. You can see there's English, French, Spanish, German, and Italian. Do wish there were more, but that's what we got for now. Uh, recruitment system. There's recruiters or global labor pools. So this is one of the big ones and maybe a bit of a contentious one. So recruiters is how the game worked originally where it was when you put down a, a working building, an industry building, it sends out a walker and that walker has to then find a house. It has to pass a house for that industry building to get a worker. Now, global labor pool means that the industry buildings just always have access to your population. There are people who prefer one or the other, but just so you know, there is an option to choose which one you want. Worker population, there's age simulation or fixed worker ratio. This uh, it can make the game rather complicated. So in the original game, it was age simulation. Citizens between the ages of 20 and 49 years old work, and anyone younger or older than that range, they count towards your population, but they don't count towards your labor force. Now, fixed worker ratio is much easier to understand. It basically just means that 40% of your population is always available to work. Again, this option it also exists in, in the Caesar 3 modded version, but the important thing here is whether you prefer the old style or the new style, it's an option. Cheat codes. Yes or no, apparently. I don't actually know what the cheat codes are at this point, but apparently there are cheat codes, so that's a throwback to the past. Predators. Now, I'm assuming this means there are dangerous animals on the map. This can be toggled, interestingly. I wasn't expecting this as an option, so this would be animals that you wouldn't be hunting for game meat. So it would be uh, scorpions or hippos or, uh, you know, that, that sort of thing. Interesting that that can be a toggle. I'm okay with this option existing. Those dangers can be a bit of a problem, but I think I would have to test a bit more on how effective maybe towers are at uh, killing those animals or, or, and stuff like that. Uh, besides that, storage default set to accept here. Um, uh, it can be all or none. This is granaries and storage yards. So the default, whether they accept everything when you build them or accept nothing when you build them. This is a great option to have because it really is just play style. I personally prefer none because I like to put down a storage yard and not have random things just end up in there by accident, right? So I prefer it on none and then to let it accept the few things I want in there. But if you prefer all, that's how it was in the original game, you can pick that. I'm going to put it on none. Unique walker range. This is every type of walker has its own range and some can cover more tiles than others. Um, so I, I'm not sure about this tooltip. I have to double check this because right now it says unique walker range, yes. And it says all walkers have the same basic range. The tooltips might be reversed or the setting might be reversed. I'm not too sure which one it is. Good option to have. I just need to figure out which one is which. And in the original game, uh, walkers had unique ranges. Some walkers just went further than others, but you can make it, you know, all the same. So I'll follow the tooltip now and put it on that, but I want the unique walker range. Bizarre default accept. Again, I would prefer that as none because I prefer the bazaars not accepting all types of food and all resources. When I first build it, I like to control what bazaar sells what. So I'll put it on none. In the original game, it's all great option to have like that one. Default except, similar to the others, I, I will actually leave... Dock options is, is new. That was not in the original game at all. And I will actually set that one to all because generally I have one dock, maybe two docks, but they tend to be next to each other. So I'd rather docks just accept all. Good. Off-road water lift. Now this is new. Water lifts automatically get access to the workforce even when they're not connected to a road or they need a road to connect it to them. Um, I'm going to leave it as... Uh, yes? No? I actually don't know which one I prefer. I'll come back to that one, but that's a nice option to have. Off-road towers, similar. Do towers need to have um, road connection? 
Again, maybe I'd prefer no, but I'm not too sure which one I prefer. I have to think about this one as well. I mean, obviously not be needing a road connection makes it slightly easier, but it's not, not that big a deal either way. It's, it's more to do with whether you're annoyed by it or not. Subcategory pre-open. So clicking on a building category on the right bar opens every subcategory directly. Um, I think yes. So this this is just a, a UI control. So when you like click on the sidebar buttons, whether you want to see all the options immediately, or do you want subcategories to be separate cat uh, like separate little sections that you have to click on individually? I think this more has to do with what resolution you're working with, but that's a very nice option to have. Hover on building delay. Always good to have hover delay options. Right now it's two, I assume that's two seconds. The, when the hover on building delay um, means when you hover on a building, there's a little delay and then it shows the spawn point and despawn point of the walker and sometimes some other information. I actually prefer that maybe, yeah, actually two, I'll leave it on two for now. Overseer pause off. This means when opening an overseer, does it pause the game? In the original, it did because the overseer was a full screen thing. But this time, the overseer is not a full screen thing. So you can have the game continue running. I'll leave it off for now. Some of these options, the way they're worded is kind of double negatives. Like, do you want this off? Yes, which means it is yes to being off. <laughs> And if you say no, then it is no to being off, which makes it on. It's a it's a weird wording, but I I think you get it. A scripted events pause, I would say yes. So, like, see this one, overseer pause off, but scripted events pause, which basically means scripted events pause yes, or on, rather. So I want yes to this and yes to this, because I want no pausing on the overseer, but I want pausing on events. But they're both... So I want this one off. No, wait. Yeah, I want this one off. I want this one on. But both options have to be set to yes. <laughs> it's... Okay, sure. Um, ooh, garden options. You can have random click and drag op gardens, which is how it was before. Or you could have selected gardens. Um, you can place gardens the same way you can place statues. So they're like fixed buildings. That is a very interesting option that... Um, I don't know whether I prefer it, but I kind of want to try it. You press the rotation key to cycle through the, the available gardens. I, I don't know whether I prefer it, but I want to try it. It's, it's just a cool option. But also when you, know, when you really want to decorate up your city, that could just allow you to get it just right. Because, you know, sometimes the gardens, they, they just they don't quite fit into the crevices perfectly. So <laughs> you want to do that. Auto save delay, great. Minimum on one years, you can have it up to three years. Uh, you can't turn off auto saving. I wouldn't recommend turning off auto saving anyway. I'll leave it on one year for now. And then I think a big one, which it doesn't break down here. I, I would like to have some exact stats on this, uh, but the difficulty can be easy, normal, or hard. There's only three difficulties this time. And I think they mentioned, so in, in the original Pharaoh, there were five difficulty levels. So it was very easy and very hard. Now, I think they mentioned that hard is essentially easier than very hard, but maybe slightly harder than the old hard. Normal, I think, is normal. And easy, I think they, they said something along the lines of it's, it's harder than very easy, but maybe slightly easier than the old easy. But also with the rebalancing and the new mechanics, difficulty is hard to compare between the original game and the new game because everything's sort of redone. So I'm just going to default to hard because I always play these games on the hardest, hardest difficulty. And if it's easier than very hard, then I'm, I should just stick to hard for now. All right, those are the gameplay options. Let's have a look at the graphics options here. Uh, a nice set. We've got our resolution. Great. It does go up to uh, higher resolutions, as you can see. And they did confirm ultra widescreen support. Display selection. Very good. Because for those of us with more than one monitor, sometimes by weird setups, it just defaults to the wrong monitor or something like that. So it's great to have uh, that choice. Uh, frame rate settings, you can lower it down to 15, 30, 60, 90, 120, or unlimited. Now, 
Uh, if you have some, like when I I test the different frame rates on some of the frame rate settings, I do have some flickering. Um, so uh, if if you have that flickering effect, try different frame rates as well. Also, uh, I I did just find running it at 120 to be noticeably smoother than 60. So uh, I do recommend, like, if, if you usually stick to 60, I do recommend going up to higher, 90, 120, or even unlimited. I just don't, like, because I do recording and stuff, I don't like to go straight to unlimited because it can sometimes cause instability with the recording. So I'm, I'm putting it on 120 for now. Uh, full screen option, borderless window, all windowed, all three options are there, which are great. Uh, V-Sync, on or off, that's a good one. And... There is a cursor confined option. Look, my cursor is confined. It, it, well, j just so you know, my, my other monitor is off to the right. And you see, I can't get to that because I can find the cursor. Ah, oh, so many modern games just don't have this option. So it's really great to have that there. Okay, now for audio. And you know, I'm a stickler for audio sliders. Let's see what they got. We got master, music, Ambient sounds, voices, and sound effects. All right, that's pretty comprehensive. As far as I know, there aren't more cinematics than the intro cinematic. I still would like to have a cinematic audio slider, even if it's just for the intro cinematic, even if it's just for that. Um, I, I don't think they have more cinematics besides that, but this, this is pretty good. I will not really complain about this. This is pretty good. I, I don't think they're missing anything significant here. Yeah, that's good. Now, also importantly, there are rebindable keys. You can rebind, right? Pause, uh, press the key you wish to bind this command to. Do I want it on P? I don't know because there's, there's a lot of things now. We can rebind these. Uh, speed up and uh, speed down are here. But these are the default options, by the way. I've not changed these yet. Reset speed is also T. Um, I'm not sure about these, but sure. Toggling a grid, that's nice to have. There wasn't really a grid before. Uh, you can use WAS to control the camera. Rotate building, this is very important now because most buildings can be rotated. Even things like prefectures, uh, temples, you know, the tax collector, everything, as far as I know, almost everything can be rotated. And they're not just flipped graphics because... I sort of wondered why didn't why didn't in the old games why can't you just rotate everything and then I realized the lighting would be wrong the buildings are designed to have a specific direction of lighting so you have to create a different graphic if you want to rotate the building and in this game they have actually created a different graphic so you can rotate uh, the buildings high cliffs nilometer that's a nice little UI thing that we have you can toggle it with N. Uh, you can hide the UI for those screenshots. That's good. Flat mode, that's good to have. We had that before. Uh, building picker, that's supposed to be to be able to like clone a building and then just rather than uh, selecting the option on the right and finding the building you want, you should be able to clone a building that, that's already on the map and then just place it. That should be good. Uh, world map, yes. Briefing, yes. Menu, in-game help. Quick saving, that's nice to have there. All the overseers, of course. Uh, and all the overlays. So right now the overlays by default are not bound. So if you start up the game and you're wondering, how come I can't... I pressed F, but how come it didn't bring up the, the fire overlay? Uh, I assume it's because things might be... Yeah, F is uh, bound to flat mode. So you could change this back to the old school um, key bindings. No problem. And But just generally rebindable keys huge huge bonus for accessibility options and very very important whatever your playstyle. so this is great so overall from gameplay to graphics to audio to key bindings it's pretty comprehensive a little bit confusing on the wording of some of these options but generally i think all the the it's a lot it's a good set of options uh I, i'd like some explanation on what the difficulty differences are um, and yeah, I think, I think that's pretty good. Anyway, that is the options menu in Pharaoh A New Era. Now, let's get back to more gameplay. Oh, welcome, citizens of ancient Egypt, to mission three in the pre-dynastic period and the third and final mission of this dynasty. Ah, oh, 
3500 to 3050 BC. Per Wajit. Uh, this is a notorious mission, if I recall correctly, from the original Pharaoh. We do need to get 600 population in modest homesteads. Let's go ahead and play that and get into the game. Mission three, here we go. The Thinite nobles still struggle to unite the lands of the Nile under one supreme ruler. To aid them in their cause, it is hoped that you will endeavor to establish a thriving community at Perwajit in the humid delta region of Lower Egypt, thus spreading their influence throughout the length of the sacred river. To support a population larger than that of a village, you must learn to use agriculture. Egyptian farmers have begun to exploit the rich fertile soil deposited by the annual inundation of the Nile River for growing crops. The Nile can be hazardous, however. Many dangers lurk along its banks and in its waters, such as deadly crocodiles, hippopotamuses, and malaria-carrying mosquitoes. Welcome to the precarious Nile and the city of Perwajit. Let's get into this. Floodplains and farming. Yes, I know. Start building a city along with some farms and work camps. And this is a nice green mission, so you can see how a grassy mission looks like. There's some uh, papyrus reeds right there. There's some birds flying around over there. Okay, and we've got the, the floodplains over here. Are those? Are those some hippos? Hippos. The biggest, baddest, meanest mammal out there. Yeah, they're... They're, they're dangerous. Okay, let's get a city going. I tend to build around here, so let's just do a nice long road like that. Is that too long? That might be a bit too long. Let's shorten it somewhat. Uh, I'll do this and do this. So I'll have the road do this. Good. And I'll roadblock there and roadblock there. Make sure we have some houses there and then we can get the essentials down so let's do uh water supply Is that doesn't have to be anywhere specific let's put the water supply there position there i will want to do and let's do firehouse 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 architect's post architect's post Architect's post. Uh, what else do we need? I need to set up farms. So let's go food and farming. We'll need work camp, work camp, road block, and then build the farms. So fig farms. We'll we'll overdo it a bit. That should be more than enough. And we just have the road extend out. I'll just do that. Okay. And then we connect this up to there. And make sure we roadblock any access there. And that will get things going, yes. Uh, we'll need the granary, which I will put a little bit back here and the bazaar right there. This will be accepting figs. And this will be... Oh, there is an accept all button. Figs and pottery. Okay. Uh, religion, right. I should get temple to Osiris. And I'll throw down a couple shrines right now. Just to get that going. Because I will forget that. We can't do the storage yard yet. Now, in terms of balance, this mission is going to be interesting to see how it exactly plays out because in the OG Pharaoh, the balance required more than one uh, booth. You had to spam up booths because originally the game required uh, one booth just to evolve the houses. But when they released the Cleopatra expansion, it rebalanced entertainment because they introduced the zoo. So then this mission got a bit confusing because you had to spam booths. Like you had to have three or four of them to actually have the houses evolve because 
just giving juggler access to people wasn't enough. <laughs> that you, you needed more venues. So that um, uh, we'll 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 see if the balance is the same here, and hopefully they do explain that as well. Fig farms are going. There we go. Very nice. 75% fertile, 94% fertile. This should all work pretty much the same. Cannot burn, cannot collapse. It's nice that they clarify those little points. Um, also, in the... Is this the encyclopedia? I can confirm that in the encyclopedia, a lot of this, which talks about the history particularly, has been rewritten. You know, there used to be various conjectures, some guessing... Um, some filling in the blanks in the original writing. And it, it has been rewritten based on the most recent archaeological understandings as far as I'm aware. They did get an Egyptologist to make sure things are accurate. I don't know if they've like redone some of the, gr the graphics to maybe match history a bit better as well. I, I'm not qualified to comment, but I will assume that some things were fixed up there as well. But I, I can confirm that the writing is different, especially in the, the encyclopedia parts about the history. Okay, let's get some food in. We got to get these figs going. Come on, farming. Does it say the... It's nice that the, the game can still run with these menus open. There we go. First harvest of figs. Very nice. Then we can start feeding people. Very good. Malaria. Yes. Okay. So let's slow the game back down. Services. Uh, apothecary. I can rotate that. Have that going. I can already do entertainment. If I just get rid of that house, I can fit the booth right there. Uh, entertainment. Uh, booth. Right there. And I'll put the juggler school over here. Keep upgrading your housing, it says. We don't have access to beautification quite yet. So let's get that going. A blessing from Osiris. I guess we don't really have enough food yet. I could spam down temples and shrines. You know what? Let's just throw down another temple. That'll help evolve some houses. There we go. Industry. Now do the clay pit and all of that. Yes. So let's go to production. Clay pit. Uh, see, I can't build it there because of it says the spawn point right there, right? So what I people always ask me why throw down extra roadblocks, right? Like why why do you need more than one? Because it's to block the spawn point. You see? Oh, that spawn point still there. It's trying to fit on the north side, but if I roadblock there. Then try it again. Look at that. The spawn point is on the right side. Oh, well, rather the left side, on the correct side. And that should now be fine because that's the worker seeker there. If I go into the options, actually, I can turn off worker seekers. So turn off recruiters and just go to global labor pool. And that won't be a problem. Look, there's no more worker seekers. Everything just has workers. Copy that. Oh, I can't fit another. But that would mean... Yeah, I don't actually have to worry about this stuff. Just roadblock this instead. There we go. Production. Uh, no, production. Potters. Can also be rotated very nice. So I can do like facing that way, facing that way, facing that way. Give some visual variety. Very nice. Uh, we'll need to get some storage, stock and distribution, workforce and unemployment. Yes. That is also an option, by the way, to control uh, worker population. That's age simulation or fixed worker ratio. I'll be going through this soon enough. Don't worry. Uh, storage, storage. Uh, stock and distribution. Storage yard. I didn't really leave much room for this, but sure, go there and accept just uh, pottery and get that. Also, there is a clear button on storage yards now. So if there's like just some random resources, there is a delete those resources. It is there on the granary as well. It wasn't a great flood this year. 
But here we go. Let's get some pottery in. It is working. It is working. There we go. Some pottery. Um, small blessing from Osiris. Very good. We can allow to buying... Oh, it is already set to buying pottery. Beautification. Here we go. And this is something I want to try. So, for example, beautification, we do have the traditional draw gardens like that. But in the options, there was the select your gardens option. So let's confirm that. And now if I go to gardens, you can actually pick the kind of garden you want. It's no longer a drag thing. Garden. Yeah. And you can rotate. Yeah, if you press rotate, you can do this and go through all the different designs of gardens. That's very cool. What else we got? There's that, there's that, there's that, there's that. But there's quite a lot. How many of these are there? There's that many two by two gardens. Okay. Um, did I even get through all the three by threes? I wasn't expecting that many. Okay, I got through all the 3x3s. Three uh, those are the 2x2s. Two and then there's the 1x1s, one which... ...have a lot. That's still not the same. That many 1x1 one one gardens. <laughs> and plazas, of course. Which works similarly to before. Oh, look at our... Lovely city. So I don't know whether I prefer the drawing gardens or the select your gardens. Drawing gardens is easier. Random and drag gardens, you know, but... If you're a perfectionist and want to get your gardens just right, there's a lot of options and you can just place them just nicely like that. Hmm. I'm not sure which I prefer. Anyway, it seems this mission does have... This house cannot evolve as there's hardly any entertainment to be found in the location. So this mission does... The balance seems to be have been maintained. So I assume we can just do what we normally do. And get more booths going. No workers live. Wait, did I? Oh, this is on recruiters. Um, did I switch that back or did it reset? I'm not sure. Global labor pool. Just, just to damn it. Wait, did I not save it? Is that why? Global labor pool confirm. I'm not pressing confirm. <laughs> that, that's why. Confirm. Okay. And then all of the booths have entertainment. Now, let's see if that is actually enough to get that going. Do I need to have jugglers in there? Let's find out. Uh, 10 modest homesteads to win this mission. There we go. Yes. Yes. So, Pawajit is still Pawajit. <laughs> Superb! Your own citizens are beginning to look to you as their caretaker, and neighboring cities also hail you as a provider in times of need. There we go. That is the end of Prawajit, and should be the end of the first dynasty, going into the archaic period now with Neken. Ah. So that's the end of that. But we've got so much more to look at, so let's get into that. Okay, now I'm going to be talking about the key differences and similarities between the original Pharaoh and Pharaoh A New Era. There's so much to talk about, but let's focus on some of the easy ones, some of the interesting ones, and some of the contentious um, maybe debatable ones, which I think is very important for you to know what exactly this game is. Now, there's probably hundreds, if not thousands, of minute differences, but this is what I want to talk about. Firstly, let's go through the easy ones. Bugs. People always ask, are the old bugs gonna be there? And 
unlikely because this game had to be remade from the ground up. This is running in Unity, I think it is, and the old bugs couldn't be there unless they purposefully put them back in. However, there could be new bugs. I have not found any major game-breaking bugs yet. Maybe a, a couple of confusing tooltips here and there, but no, no big bugs so far. The game seems to be working as intended. They did take extra time to release this game to fix the bugs, so they should have gotten most of them. Um, so I wouldn't worry about the old bugs. There might be some new exciting bugs. <laughs> we'll see if I can find them. I am a very good bug hunter, but we'll see. Now, the big gameplay options I have shown you in more detail in another section, and it is very important to just note once more that these gameplay options are options. You can pretty much play the game as it was in OG. Like, anything they, they changed here has become options. Whether you want global labor pool or having recruiters, up to you. Some interesting options I did not expect, like turning off predators. Um, but yeah, so those big gameplay options, different, but can be the same. And then rebalancing. So, for example, the difficulty options, there's only three now, and that means the game has been rebalanced in significant ways, and mainly a lot of the difficulty of the original game was dealing with the bugs or dealing with the janky military. <laughs> so, um, now that military is different, which I will get into, um, and the bugs are gone, if not different, um, it's hard to assess the difficulty one-to-one -to, -one to compare with original and a new era. So we'll have to see how that plays out as we get through the entire campaign, especially the later levels. Okay, now let's get into uh, a few other things. Uh, Forced Walkers is kept. That is a decision they made. So originally I have talked to... Um, uh, I have confirmed that Forced Walkers, when it was initially a thing in Caesar 3, it was not intended. Uh, but the developers of Pharaoh A New Era have chosen to keep that as a mechanic. And it's sort of a hidden mechanic, but for those of you who are worried about losing the ability to do Forced Walkers, don't worry, that's still a thing. And I should mention in this section that for the map editor, you might notice there's no map editor option here, they have confirmed that it, it is coming, but it's not quite ready yet, so they will be adding the map editor in an update at some point after release. Okay? Okay, map editor is coming, so there will be custom maps, and you'll be able to make maps and share them and all of that. So no worries there. It just needs a bit more time to get the map editor going. Now, let's talk about the more controversial changes, which some people like, and some people not so much. And a lot of it is preference-based. And I think at this point I should remind everyone that the original Pharaoh is not going anywhere. That is still for sale. You can still buy it. It's on Steam and GOG. OG Pharaoh is there. You can play it at your leisure. It's not going anywhere. It's not like some other remakes or remasters where they release the remake or remaster and the original is just gone. <laughs> so... Don't worry about that. OG Pharaoh is still a thing. Okay? Good. Now, here are the three things that might make or break a new era for you. Um, and I want to remind people who like the changes that a lot of people will not like the changes. And a lot of people, uh, for you, those of you who don't like the changes, I want to remind you that there are people who really like the new changes. Okay? First is the music. So the music, as we've been hearing so far, is remade. Uh, I, I would say it's remake. Uh, I'm not a music expert, so I think it's been mainly recomposed and with slight rearrangements. I think I've got those right. Um, I asked the missus about music, but <laughs> I think it's been recomposed with slight rearrangements. I think that that's correct. Um, and, of course, there are going to be fans of the original music, but a, a lot of people have been responding positively to the new music as well. So, that's a, a thing, right? 
the visual style is the elephant in the room here. And that is... Some people like it, some people don't like it. You've been seeing it, it's hard to just put into words exactly what it is. So it's either you like it or you don't. I don't find it to be a deal breaker, especially when you zoom out. You can zoom out more now. And it, it doesn't feel like... Like, even if you don't like it, it doesn't feel distracting. Playing the game still feels like playing Pharaoh. And things are still visually clear, you can still understand what's going on. And so I, I, I'm not bothered by the visual style. You might be. That is your preference, okay? Now, here is the biggest change in this game. It's military. Now, I will first show you what military is, and then we'll talk about it. So let me jump into an infamous military mission. All right, here we are in Kadesh. Oh yes, Kadesh. In the original playthrough, I had to do some cheesy things to get through this. And Kadesh was really the, the main sort of point, an example in original Pharaoh of how broken military was in the original game. Outside of weird controls uh, and the, the not knowing where the enemy is going to spawn, which means you might have to save scum quite a bit. Like, okay, like, let's face it, the RTS elements were kind of cool, but it, it was it was pretty unpleasant military and original Pharaoh, um, especially when you could only build like six ships and enemy attacks with six ships, but their ships are like five times stronger than your ship. So you have to spend like 45 minutes microing ships on 10% speed just so you can beat the... It, it, was, it, was, it was messy and, and not good. Anyway, military here is very, very different. And you know, in the intro, I mentioned that it was... Some might consider it very stripped down, if not removed. Now, it's not removed. The requirement for military is still there. And when we're talking about military, it's essentially in these city building games. Military and invasions and, and these threats and dangers are basically, they function as a timer. You could just say, oh, in 10 minutes, you're going to take some damage, right? And it's just a countdown timer, right? But that's not very fun. So to mask that, games often put things like, an invasion is coming in one year, you know? And then it's like, oh, okay, so I've got to do something before that time, otherwise I die, okay? Okay, so here, now, military does not have forts. And I'm gonna say this, don't panic. They took out the RTS elements in terms of specific unit controls and units walking around the map. That is no longer here in Pharaoh A New Era. Some of you are upset by that. Some of you are happy by that. Just know there are both, okay? <laughs> Relax. So now what you do is you build these forts and they train up soldiers, right? So you still build forts and they train up soldiers. The graphics are very different, but you see they're, they're no longer the actual units. Uh, they don't need road access. And you can see here they're training up chariots, right? Uh, for this example, I'm going to destroy one, right? So we've only got seven charioteers here. Uh, so that is going to be happening. If I speed up the game and wait for an invasion to come along, then we I can demonstrate how all of this will work. Okay, you can see an invasion is coming. They'll be here in 12 months. No problem. We'll meet them in battle. Okay, here they are. Because of their dreams of an empire, a Hittite army will arrive in your city in one month bent on conquest. And you can see the month passing up here at the top. A lot of these UI things are now pretty handy. So we only have 16 charioteers right now. So training soldiers is still the same. You have the recruiter, you have the chariots and all of that. So that's still the same. We've got 16 charioteers here. And this is... This is how military functions now, without the RTS aspect of it. A battle begins, and they're here. You go to the battle, and it just simulates the battle. Yes, yes, there's a request. It simulates the battle, and basically it shows the soldiers they have, the soldiers you have, and the number of towers you have, right? And 
it's it's out of your hands. You're not directly controlling. It just sort of simulates the battle. And when you press continue, it will tell you what uh, the enemy losses and your losses. And you can see the way this is balanced is a lot more, well, I suppose, balanced, I suppose, compared to very hard in original Pharaoh, just in terms of the numbers. Like, 16 chariots could not kill 20 chariots, 20 infantry, 10 archers on the other side. Uh, 16 chariots killed 50 of their units. But what happens if you lose? Which is why I destroy the fort. If you win, you, you take your losses and you train up again. If you lose, you don't have your whole city destroyed and lose the game or anything like that. They pillage your treasury of a significant amount, this is a third of our money, and they destroy various buildings throughout your city. Um, and we go back to our city, you can see we've lost all of our soldiers and a number of buildings have been destroyed. And that's what happens with military in Pharaoh A New Era. Okay? Okay. Now, if you had towers, they they just count to your stats on the defense, right? So you can technically build towers anywhere you like. It doesn't matter so much. Um, they like it, it just counts to your numbers in the battle. It helps, but it, it you could just build them anywhere. Okay, okay. Now let's. Oh, th right. This is Kadesh, so there's lots of invasions. <laughs> so we have nothing now. So of course there's nothing. Um, they still take losses. So it seems like there are just default losses. Um, so that, that would explain why our 16 chariots killed so many. It's not that they killed so many. There's just default losses on the enemy side. I would assume that's just, you know, dying to policemen and stuff. But I, I think it's just a, a, a set amount of losses that they will take. And they've taken more stuff. And I think they can't destroy every building. Like, they don't destroy houses. Um, they don't destroy military production production military buildings i think i think they destroy storage facilities and stuff like that right particularly storage yards but because we barely have anything here there's not so much to destroy okay okay so that's how military works you still have to train up soldiers you still have to prepare for it but it's a lot more hands off let's talk about that all right, military in Pharaoh A New Era. That is the biggest difference between original Pharaoh and new Pharaoh. Reminder, original Pharaoh still exists, okay? Let's underlie everything with that. So in terms of the new military, what do I think? Like, I feel like it's less engaging not having the military. That, like actually in our hands, in our control. So it feels a little lacking in that regard. Just to clarify, when I think about the lack of RTS in Pharaoh A New Era, I initially miss it. But when I play OG Pharaoh, I get frustrated with all the issues. Let's not forget getting units on transports, trying to guess enemy spawn points, and having to save scum when you guess wrong, along with chariots just wiggling against each other. So I do have split feelings about it. And a note that in a new era, losing a battle means they take money. And now if you spend too much money, it is a loss condition. So there's a lot of problems with OG Pharaoh military. This is one solution to that problem. And a lot of people, the OG military was the deal breaker. Like they could not play Pharaoh because they just couldn't stand the military. This will solve that problem for them. Personally, I'm okay with it because I'm not a fan of the original military either. This leaves it more of a focus as a city builder. There is a military restriction in terms of the challenge of preparing enough military and there are still going to be troop requests and all of that. But it does feel a little bit hands off. Like I might have preferred if they went to uh, remain the hands on approach, but uh, balancing it and fixing the problems and improving upon that RTS elements. Like, the only way I could really imagine it going is maybe a stronghold direction, but then that is also a very big change if they went to a stronghold direction. So I'm not sure if that's a solution either. But the main point is that is a military in Pharaoh A New Era. 
and you will have your own opinions of whether you like that, whether you don't like that, which one you prefer, whether you're okay with it. That's really up to you, okay? But my job really is to just show you what it is. And on my personal opinion, I'm okay with it. I will still be playing through the whole game. And I'm, I'm actually fine with this version of military because I still have to do it. I just don't have to deal with... Basically, it's taken the original Pharaoh military and taken out all the bad parts, right? But taking out all the bad parts means, you know, you're only left with so much. But it is still there, and I'm fine with that. Thus concludes our first big step into the desert sands. A long path has been laid out before us, and I am determined to see it to completion. Will you join me?